Okay, moving on to the team that I have finishing in second in this Big East Conference. That would be Greg McDermott and the Creighton Blue Jays. And it's crazy because last year, honestly, could have been the best Creighton team that I've seen since I started watching college basketball. And I know a lot of people are going to say, Zach, you're crazy. Did you watch Doug McDermott play college basketball? Yeah, I did. And guess what? This Creighton team last year was better than that Creighton team. And I think if the NCAA tournament would have happened last year, Creighton could have made the Final Four. I'm dead serious. And I think this year, they're like a back-end top 10 team that I fit, that I feel very comfortable putting as my team to finish in second place in the Big East and the team that I think is the biggest challenger to Villanova. And if Tyshawn Alexander would have came back, I think Creighton would have been a top five team. Um, and could have won the Big East. I probably would have picked them to win the Big East if Alexander came back. But unfortunately, he didn't. And I think Creighton also was going to win the conference last year. And they easily could have won the Big East tournament last year if Marcus Zagorowski, their starting point guard, didn't get hurt. And they really did play great basketball all around. They were such a fun team to watch. They spaced the floor. They had shooters everywhere. And Tyshawn Alexander was a big secondary ball handler who I thought was great to play with Zegarowski and went pro probably a little too early without much NBA stock. And when you see other guys that came back to school like Yves Pons and Chris Smith, guys like that, it's kind of frustrating for Creighton because you easily could have had a player like this. And if he came back, your team this season would have been... The problem here also is that Tyshawn Alexander was Creighton's best defender by far. This Creighton team was pedestrian on defense last year, and Alexander was so good that he led them to the fifth best defensive ranking in the Big East per 10 Pom. So this leads into the most important question facing Creighton this season. Who is going to replace Tyshawn Alexander? There are some options. Marcus Zagorowski, Mitch Ballack, Denzel Mahoney, Damian Jefferson, Christian Bishop. These are all guys who are experienced and have produced at the Big East level. They're currently possibly interested in a waiver for the Duke transfer, Alex O'Connell. That's interesting to me. I don't think they're in on it, which makes sense because Zego, Balik, Antoine Jones, and the other kid, uh, Roddy Andron. Ikalashvili, he's going to be in the mix as well. So they have plenty of guards, plenty of wings. I don't think Alex O'Connell really is going to have to be in the mix for Creighton this year. So if I'm Greg McDermott, I guess I am saving his eligibility uh, towards next year. Um, talking about this uh, this Rati Andrana Kalashvili, this is a kid that played in the Republic of Georgia, low-level FIBA, and put up really good numbers and can be a backup point guard. And if not, they have other options like Sharif Mitchell. And I bring those guys up because last year, you guys know Marcus Zagorowski, the starting point guard, kind of had some trouble staying healthy. They also bring back Jacob Epperson and Ryan Kalkbrunner, uh, freshman big man, back end top 100 recruit he could really play and i think creighton has some depth with those two guys this year that gives them the ability to play bigger unlike last year when they had to play christian bishop at the five and that's another reason why i really like this creighton team kind of similar to villanova they have many different lineups that they could play uh, depending on the situation this year between those two guys they could play with the true center which means also they could play four guards with a true center or four guards with christian bishop like they did last year so i do think there still is a possibility that creighton could be like a back end top eight top 10 team even without tyshawn alexander i'll say this Marcus Zagorowski is absolutely a star. He is an awesome all-around point guard. He really does a good job setting the table for his teammates, and he scores from all three levels of the floor. He also is a pretty good defender. I like Greg McDermott's up-tempo, spread-out system, and I think it's really designed for a point guard like Zegarowski because he's just so quick, so fast, and he can shoot, and he should once again thrive in this system for the upcoming season. When you look at Creighton, they have seniors and veterans all over the place. Zegarowski's a junior. Balak is a senior. Damian Jefferson is a senior. Christian Bishop is a junior. Mahoney is a senior. Epperson is a senior. There's plenty of experience all around this Creighton team. Also at coach, uh, McDermott has coached basically all of these guys besides a couple. So I really like that returning 
talent and nucleus that this Creighton Blue Jay team has. I think there's a possibility that Marcus Zagorowski could be a first-team All-American this year. He was great last year, and he got hurt in the last game of the season when they were at home against Seton Hall. And I remember watching that game. It was in Creighton. Their fans were going nuts. They had the Let It Fly shirts going on the sideline, and they were going crazy. And I remember saying to myself after that game, you know, usually I'm not that big of a Creighton fan. Usually they have a tough time winning games away from home, especially since they've gotten to the Big East. But last year, I'm telling you, that Creighton team was different than any other Creighton team I've ever seen. And Greg McDermott and his staff deserve so much credit for the job they've done. And I do think if they would have made the NCAA tournament, or if, if the NCAA tournament would have happened, I should say, Creighton would have been a problem and would have gone very deep. I'm very high on them this season. I think besides Zegarowski, there are also some really underrated guys that they have around him. Mitch Ballack is a senior shooter, could play defense. He has good size. They also bring in Antoine Jones. This is a transfer from Memphis who can make shots, which gives Creighton three guys who could shoot and put the ball on the floor with Zegarowski, with Ballack, and with Jones. And the thing about Creighton is this. I think they're at their best when they're playing small. And when I say play small, when they're playing a small ball five, what, that could either be Christian Bishop, he's only 6'7", or even Denzel Mahoney, who's only 6'5". And the reason why I bring that up is because last year, that's basically exactly what Creighton did. I think you look at Creighton, right? They could play a lineup with Zegarowski, Balick, Jones, Jefferson, and Bishop because they basically did it last season. I know Alexander's not going to be there, but I think Antoine Jones could score enough that he could provide an offensive threat. Maybe you put a Sharif Mitchell or a Rathi in there. Uh, Creighton and Greg McDermott are going to have a lot of options with this depth. I really like also Christian Bishop. I think he's one of the more underrated players in college basketball. He's energetic. He's active, block shots, rebounds. And I think he's a really good center for this Creighton team. You also look at Denzel Mahoney. I understand he shoots a lot. This is a kid that transferred in from a southeastern Missouri State last year midseason. And he really gave Creighton exactly what they needed. Offensive firepower off the bench. I understood he shoots the ball a lot, but I thought last year that's exactly what Creighton's uh, bench needed. Mahoney could be a double-digit scorer this year. He's super feast or famine. I'm curious to see what exactly Greg McDermott does in terms of how often he plays him. Creighton plays a small lineup with Mahoney at the five and Damian Jefferson at the four, which works because their guards around him could shoot it. Um, and I just think Creighton, the way they play, is very good and is very nice if you're a fan of just modern day, you know, fast paced, spread it out basketball. And that's why for me, Creighton always is going to be one of the more entertaining teams to watch in the country just because of the way they move the ball so quick and their offensive throw. Uh, flow, excuse me. I think if you need a center, you're going to go to Jacob Epperson, uh, which obviously gives you some good depth with his size. And that is like your seven to eight man rotation. You know, you're in good shape with that. In my opinion, Creighton is the clear second best team in the Big East. You look at their rotation, I think you're going to play Zegarowski at the one. Um, he was phenomenal last year. 16 points, 4 rebounds, 5 assists. I expect those numbers to be about the same, if not better. You'll have Jones, the transfer from Memphis, and Ballack in the backcourt. Those uh, are two guards that are over 6'5", which gives you good size and good defensive versatility in the backcourt. Uh, and then Damian Jefferson and Christian Bishop at the 4'5". These are two guys that played in the Creighton Blue Jay system last year super experienced and then I think you start off with a, a a six seven eight in the rotation of Mahoney Epperson and Andra Kanishvili Rathi uh that is a solid eight-man rotation I think uh for Greg McDermott in this Creighton team and if I were a Blue Jay fan especially when you consider the way last season ended I would be so excited for this season to start because Marcus Zagorowski and the rest of this team could really be that good and this could be a special, special season for Creighton. I think to end it, uh, Villanova is clearly the best team in the Big East, but I said it once again. If Tyshawn Alexander would have came back to Creighton, I would have picked Creighton to win the Big East. So Creighton, I think, is a tier 
above third place and a tier below first place. I expect Creighton to compete for a conference title. They'll have an unreal offense, uh, you know, a decent defense, and they'll find themselves with a two as a two or a three seed in March and the potential to make a deep run in the Final Four. I can't wait to see what Marcus Zagorowski and Greg McDermott have in store for us. And uh, yeah, I just can't wait to watch this Creighton team play.